workplaces, huh? They can kind of feel like their own little country sometimes, you know, each one with its own thing going on. The lingo, the way people dress, even the unspoken rules. Definitely. Today, we're really diving deep into this whole idea of corporate culture clash. Yeah. And we're taking a page from Molly's diary to do it. Oh, interesting. Diaries can be so revealing. Right. It's like getting a peek straight into someone's head. Now, of course, we're going to keep things anonymous, no real names or companies. But what we can share is that Molly recently swapped her life in Boston for a shiny new job down in New Orleans. Okay. And let me tell you, her diary does not hold back. She goes all in. I see. I see. I see. Like, she describes her old Boston crew as, and I quote, sharp and unapologetic. But when it comes to her New Orleans colleagues, let's just say the words Southern and fake pop up a lot. Hmm. This is fascinating because it makes you wonder, Yeah. is this just about different regional styles or is there something deeper going on, you know, with her perceptions? It's kind of like those travel books, right? The ones that are all, don't be offended if they don't make eye contact here. It's just their culture. What flies in one place is totally off in another. Exactly. And in a workplace where communication is key, those differences can make or break things. Like, seriously. And reading Molly's diary, it's almost like a cautionary tale, like a how not to fit in at your new company. I don't know if I'd go that far. There's something to be said for staying true to yourself. Oh, for sure. Like, individuality is important. Molly's not afraid to be herself, even if it ruffles some feathers. Her flats versus heels, bringing ramen for lunch. These little acts of rebellion are kind of great. Okay, maybe cautionary tale was a tad dramatic. Just a bit. <laughs> But there's a balance, isn't there? Between being yourself and, like, totally ignoring what's expected at work. Exactly. And, well, sometimes Molly, at least in those early diary entries, yeah. maybe misses that balance a bit. Yeah, like that whole thing with Walton and the ramen. Oh, right. Remind me about that one. Okay, so picture this. Molly's at her desk, happily slurping down her ramen. <laughs> and Walton, one of her coworkers, he's just making small talk, right? Mm -hmm. Probably like, ooh, that looks good. Where'd you get it? Totally innocent. You'd think so. Mm -hmm. But Molly sees it completely differently. She takes it as some kind of comment about her being Asian American. You mean like her food choices are somehow weird? That seems to be her take. And it, it taps into this whole idea of microaggressions. Mm. Those little things people say, often without realizing, that can make someone feel like they don't belong. So Walton might have meant nothing by it. Right, right. But Molly sees it as this judgment based on her background. And those kinds of things sting, you know, especially when you're already the new kid on the block. And I think this is where her corporate punk side really takes over. Like, she's not one to just let things slide. She's ready to call out any whiff of hypocrisy. Exactly. But... yeah. Maybe not always in the most, shall we say, diplomatic way. Not exactly winning any Employee of the Month awards. Right. But then on the other hand, you've got her celebrating another colleague, Tara. Huh. Apparently, Tara used a stapler instead of those little pushpins. Like, total rebellion in Molly's book. Right. But then she turns around and judges Tara for, like getting married and having kids because those are traditional choices yeah it's almost like molly only likes rebels who fit her very specific definition interesting so we've got this culture clash unconscious bias and a whole lot of rebel without a cause energy going on it's quite the mix can molly find her place in this new world of as she puts it forced smiles and fake chit chat it makes you wonder doesn't it or is she destined to be the lone wolf forever eating her ramen on the sidelines. Doomed. Yeah, I wouldn't say doomed. I mean, her diary, it's just one side of the story, sure, right? True, true. People change, they adapt. Give her time. Yeah, maybe she just needs a little New Orleans to rub off on her, you know, yeah. get some of beignet dust sprinkled her way. Time helps, definitely. But I think what she really needs is to shift her perspective a little. Instead of this whole us versus them thing she's got going on. You think? Yeah, like what if she actually tried to understand why people are doing the things she's judging? Like all that Southern hospitality, instead of just assuming it's fake. Exactly. It's about empathy, you know, trying to bridge that cultural gap. And that doesn't mean she has to change who she is, just like open up to different ways of seeing things. Right, right. But that's easier said than done. How do you actually make that shift? She seems pretty stuck in her ways. It starts with listening. Really listening. Not just waiting for her turn to talk. Oh, you mean like actually paying attention to what people are saying. Exactly trying to get where they're coming from, even if she doesn't agree. And maybe tone down the sarcasm a smidge. A little diplomacy never hurts. But honestly, I think it's also about finding common ground. Oh, like finding your people. 
even in the most unlikely places. Right. Even in a company culture she's not crazy about, there's got to be someone who gets her, you know? Yeah. Someone who shares her sense of humor. Or her love of ramen. Exactly. And, you know, speaking of finding those connections, there's a part in her diary where she talks about this team meeting that actually went really well. Oh, yeah. She had to present this new marketing campaign, and she was convinced they would hate it. <laughs> it was a little out there. Damn it. They loved it. Like, totally embraced her ideas. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. When you find that shared goal, those differences, they don't seem so big anymore. And it seemed like it gave her a little hope, you know? Like, maybe she could actually find her place there. It's all about finding your tribe. Right. And realizing that diversity isn't just about what you see on the surface. It's about all those different perspectives and experiences. Yes. Like, just because someone prefers sweet tea over iced coffee doesn't mean you don't have anything in common. Exactly. Sometimes those unexpected connections, they turn into the best ones. So you're suggesting Molly ditch the Doc Martens and embrace the sweet tea. When in Rome, right? No, no, not at all. Being authentic is still important. But it's about finding that balance. You can be true to yourself and still make an effort to connect with the people around you. It's like being a rebel with a team spirit. But how do you put that into practice? Where do you even begin when you're feeling like such an outsider? Well, it's kind of like, how do I put this? Imagine trying to learn a whole new language. Okay, I like where this is going. You wouldn't just like memorize a phrase book and expect to be fluent, right? Right. There's a rhythm to it, a way people actually talk. You got to pick up on those little things, those unspoken cues. So you're saying Molly's new job, it's like being dropped into a foreign country. Full immersion. Exactly. Instead of freaking out over every little thing that's different, she should just dive in and be open to learning as she goes. So less analyzing, more going with the flow. Yeah. And like with language learning, those aha moments happen, you know, things start clicking. I feel that. Maybe she finds out a coworker loves the same band she does or like their sense of humor reminds her of someone back home. It's those little things. Those little points of connection. Because at the end of the day, most people, they just want to feel seen, you know, understood. And that's true no matter who you are or where you work. We've all been the odd one out at some point, right? That feeling of wanting to fit in, it's universal. Totally. And, you know, even though Molly's story is still being written, it kind of reminds us that a little empathy can go a long way. So next time we feel like the outlier, we should channel our inner language learner. Listen up. Embrace the awkward and maybe even try out a little local lingo. Hey, now you're talking. And on that note, dear listener, we leave you with this. What languages do you find yourself navigating in your own life? What helps you bridge those gaps? Until next time, happy exploring. <laughs>